I think you make your own opportunities. There's always something, there's always a way in. I think that you have to be hungry and you have to reach out. And my mom wouldn't let me get an acting agent, so I got on a train and went to Sydney and got one myself, you know. So you have to have that tenacity. But first and foremost, you have to believe in yourself because if you, if you don't have that fire, nobody else is going to believe in you or buy into that either. I would say you're not the thoughts in your head. They're just thoughts. And you can make up new ones. Do something with your hands, go outside, walk, exercise. The thing is, the mind's nature is to turn in on itself. And if you just let it run away with itself, it'll drive you mad. So it, this is a work in progress. This is not something you just overcome. You have to find tools, whether it's meditation, whether it's writing down negative thought patterns and creating more positive ones, like whatever you need to do to recognize you're just spiraling. And we do it all the time and it is a practice. And so I have to even myself catch myself being really negative about things. And it also depends on how you were brought up. Were you a glass half empty family? Were you a glass half full family? Like what's your coping strategies in life? See, I'm not a musician, I don't play an instrument. So for me, I'm, my gift is being a communicator. So I feel like there's the tone of my voice and how I communicate how I'm feeling is what lands. And I've had to learn that that's my gift and that's valid. But once I got comfortable with what my unique gift is, it made everything so much better because I wasn't trying to be something that I'm not, you know? So I, I just feel like I have a really good time walking into a writing session now because you kind of, the confidence grows over time. I'm always trying to make sure the listener is gonna get that oh, feeling. That's what I'm going for where that emotional point lands and then they don't feel so alone or they can relate to it. So that's, that's usually what I'm going for more than anything. Oh my goodness. Uh, that's just such a big word. Legacy. I, I don't know. I mean, I'd like just to be known for someone who was wholly who they are and honest in their truth about it through my art say that would be nice I was doing a lot of spiritual practice at that time of my life before that first album came out I'd met a meditation master so I was doing I had a lot of tools you could say and my perspective on who I am and what's important being that I was famous young and then you know dove deep into this eastern philosophy and spirituality and meditation so I had these really good tools for becoming mega famous again overnight with this song, which was, this is not me. <laughs> I'm not what I do. And, you know, what are you going to do with this experience? Keep your feet planted on the ground. And I used those tools to be able to cope with that. Um, and it's transient. I mean, I'd, I'd been famous and then not famous. And then, and so if you, once you go through the rhythm of that, you have no attachment to that. You don't define that as meaning anything other than a result of being on camera a little bit more frequently. So I don't place any importance on those things and I was able to value the good parts of it and certainly handle the fact that everybody had an expectation of me after that first album to live up to that. And that I found really hard. That's probably the hardest part was not you know the celebration of connecting with everyone around the world and my first album doing so well and winning awards and I mean that was fantastic and I made a promise to enjoy it and savor it in case that was the peak but it was then writing the second album and that was the, the, the challenge for me and that's where those tools came into play so I consider completing that album as one of my greatest achievements under that kind of pressure. <laughs> 